Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. Welcome to Mastering On One Photo Raw 2018. In the last video, I mentioned that you don't have to import images into On One Photo Raw 2018. All you need to do is open up the Browse module, and then in the left-hand panel, navigate to wherever you may have images on your computer, and you could process them right from there. Well, what if you have images on your camera, on the memory card, or even on your mobile phone? How do you get the images off those devices onto your computer so that you could process them? Well, it's very easy to do with the import module. So for this demonstration, I have my memory card from my Nikon D850 plugged into my computer. So all I need to do is import them off that memory card into my computer. And to do that, open On One Photo Raw 2018 and go up to File, Import. And when you do that, the Import dialog will open up. And you could see it automatically found my memory card and it loaded the images that I have on that memory card into the import dialog. So I'm going to maximize this so you could see it a little better. Now if I had more than one memory card plugged in, or even if I had a memory card and my mobile phone plugged in, I could access them right here with this little drop down. So I could pick exactly where I want the source to be uh, obtained from right there. Also, there's a little checkbox right there is after I import them, I could eject this memory card when, when it's done with the import, so I'm going to keep that checked. And as you can see, it, it has all these images here, and each image has a check mark in the top left-hand corner. That indicates that that image will be imported. If I don't want to import any one image, I could simply uncheck that box, or if the image is selected, I could hit the space bar on my keyboard and it will uncheck the box if it's checked. And if it's not checked, hit that space bar again and it will check it. You also could go up here and check none or check all. So I have all 17 images checked. Now, I could just import them and it will import them, but we want some control. We want to put them in a specific spot and maybe we want to add some metadata to the images and or maybe add a preset to the images. And you do that over here on the right hand panel. So I'm going to import these to a specific folder. So what I'm going to do is in this top area here, go to this drop down and when you first use the import module, it will look exactly like this. It's just going to have choose uh, current browser location. That is where I happened to be before I opened the import dialog. So if I was already in a folder that I want them in, I don't really, I could just choose that choice and they'll automatically be put in that folder. In this case, I don't want them to go into that folder I was just in. I want them to go to a new location. So I'm going to pick choose. Now I have Mac Finder came up. Of course, if you use Windows, Windows File Explorer would come up. And I'm just going to pick where I want them. Now I have an external hard drive on this system that I call Lightroom. I'm going to put the images there, but I'm going to put them in a new folder. And the new folder I'll call, you can see the folder, I called that Lightroom Raw Images. Why don't I call this one on one raw files, not images. Okay, and we're going to create that. So I want all these new imports to go into that folder. So I'm going to click open. So that's where they're going to go. Now, we could send a backup. I could actually make a copy of the images as I take them off or I copy them from the memory card and put them in two locations. I'm not going to do that, but you would do that the exact same way I picked the first location. So I could pick a second location and we could send them there. Now, if I wanted to send them into a new folder inside of that folder, I would click here and I could add another new folder. So I had that Lightroom drive and then I have them going into on one raw files folder and then inside of that folder I could create a new folder by clicking right there and putting them right there 
And for the sake of demonstration, why don't we do that? Well, this was at Hoyt Lake. So I'll put them in a Hoyt Lake folder, which will be inside the On One Raw Files folder, and I'll show you that when we're all done. I'm not going to back them up and put them in a second folder. I won't do that. So this part of the import dialog is done. Now we're going to go down to rename, and you could actually rename the files as you import them. Usually I don't do this, but for the sake of this demonstration, I will do it. So we're going to rename them, and I'm going to give them a text name first. So I'm going to call it uh, Hoyt Lake. Okay. Then I'm going to click this little plus sign right here, and we could add something after Hoyt Lake. And I'm going to give them a date. And then I have different formats for the date. And I'm going to go with um, four-digit year, month, and day. So as you look up here, it says Hoyt Lake. And then it, right after Lake, it will have the year, the month, and the date. And I'll add another one. And we'll add a serial number. And I'm going to start off with 01. So the first imported image will have Hoyt Lake with the date with 01, and the second one will go 02, and so on. So if I want to remove any of these, I could just hit the minus sign, and it will remove any of those rename attributes. Now, metadata. We're going to turn that on, and we'll go there. Now, if you have an import preset, you could add that here. I don't have any. So we're kind of starting from scratch. So the author is me. And to make it easier, I'm going to copy that. And the copyright is me. Oops. I thought I copied it, but it didn't. So we'll type it again. Now we could add keywords. And um, this is Hoyt Lake, so. And I'm going to put all lowercase. Usually I like the keywords to be all lowercase. So we'll go with that. And then I'll put my name also as part of the keyword. But you could add as many keywords as you want. Now there's a little expose triangle right here. We'll click on that and you could do a lot more. You could add a description. Uh, you know, this if it was a family vacation or something, you might want to add that here. You could add um, a comment. And if my camera, the Nikon D850, doesn't have built-in GPS, and if I knew the GPS coordinates, if I wanted to, I could add them there also. Now, also, I could add some info down here, and I'm going to do that. Um, just very quickly, bear with me, for this demonstration of how you could create an import preset. And we'll go U.S. Say, and I won't put my phone there. Let's put my, oops, let's put that stuff there. Put my email there too. Okay, that's enough for now. So I have this info is going to get added to every single image as it's imported. Now, what I could do is I could go up here where it says preset, or I could go down here, either or, and I could write save new, go to save new preset, and it's available up here also. Save new preset. And I want to, it asks you what you want to save, all the metadata, and, you know, right now all of it is blank except for what I specifically typed in. But I'll, I'll keep them all checked. It doesn't really matter because import preset. And right there, we're going to take keywords off. Let's take keywords off because I don't want Hoyt Lake to go on every single image I import. So everything else is fine. And we'll click, click OK. So now, whenever I import images in the future, I could go to this drop down, click on Import Preset, and it will pre populate the fields down here with everything that I just typed in for this image. So I don't have to manually type this in every single time. Also, I could add a star rating if I want to the images as they come in and or a color flag or a color label. I always in the habit of calling those color labels, but on one calls those color flags. 
but either way you could add a color flag to them as well now usually on import i don't add any star setting or any color flag or label to my images but again for the sake of this demonstration i will i'll give it a blue color and three stars uh, for each image i do know some photographers that will give it some stars to come in like three and then if they don't like the image they downgrade it if they like the image they upgrade it so for the sake of this demonstration let's do that so we did our metadata i'm just going to minimize that and minimize that one the next is photo settings now you could add a preset as it comes in this is a develop preset so or a, even a uh, an effects preset Usually I never add a preset to an imported image, but again, for the sake of this demonstration, I will. So when you click on that little um, like down arrow right there, all your presets will show up. And to make it real obvious, I'll pick a, um, a black and white preset. So we'll go with, um, let's go with, I don't know. Those, let's, where's the other ones? They're, bear with me here. I'm being fussy for no reason at all. So we'll go up to black and white and we'll go to um, HDR landscape. All right. So we'll pick that one. So it's going to get in a develop or effects preset added to the image as it comes in. Now, usually I wouldn't do that, but just again for demonstration purposes. Now, here we could edit capture time. Uh, this comes in handy if you're traveling. Uh, I live on the East Coast, but let's say I was out in California and I took these pictures and I forgot to change the time on my camera. Well, when I got back to the East Coast and import them into On1, the time would be wrong. So I could adjust the time zone here. So in this case, I would, I would go plus three. So add, or I'd go minus three actually minus three to change the time but again it doesn't matter because i didn't do any of this or you could set the creation time or set the specific date that you did these um, in this case i'm not going to do any of that because i don't have to uh, but that again especially if you're traveling you might want to change the capture date and time because if you're on the other side of the world you're on a different day also so you'd have to change that so you could do that there now when I'm all satisfied, I have the images uh, check that I want imported. I have all this info on the right the way I want it. I could do the import. And one thing I failed to mention is the uh, there's a little slider in the bottom left-hand corner where you could uh, change the size of the grid view of the images. So you could do that to make them smaller or larger. So when we're all set, I could finally just click import. And once you import them, they will show up here and you can see now they uh, have a three star rating they have that blue color flag they have an import preset um, pre-applied to them processing preset pre-applied to them so they're all black and white and on top of that if I click on one you could see that it has the IPTC data I added to it with my name address email address, all that stuff I added is already put in there. So it's very easy to import images off your camera, off your memory card, or even off your mobile phone by using that import dialog that is available in On One Photo Raw 2018. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.